What's up, gals and pals? I'm Coach Vino, this is The Progress Bar, and today I continue my Star Tenders series with the one, the only, the legendary Harry Macalone. That's right, folks, I'm gonna share with you guys a little bit of history, I'm gonna make two signature cocktails, but before I do that, I'm gonna need you guys to go ahead and hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell so you can help Vino feed the hungry, hungry algorithm. <laughs> All right, folks, and make sure you stick around because we're gonna boogie down. Harry Macalone was a pioneering figure in the world of bartending. Born in Dundee, Scotland in 1890, Harry's journey into mixology began when he moved to London, where he would craft his bartending skills at Ciro's Club and write his first book, Harry of Ciro's ABC of Mixing Cocktails, in 1921. In 1923, Harry relocated to Paris, where he bought the New York Bar, eventually changing the name to Harry's New York Bar. This establishment would become a legendary destination where many influential Americans while visiting Paris, names like Ernest Hemingway, Jack Dempsey, Rita Hayworth, Scott Fitzgerald, and Humphrey Bogart would stop in to taste cocktails created especially for them. Harry would go on to write his second book, Barflies and Cocktails, in 1927. He is often credited with inventing or influencing the creation of many classic cocktails, including the Bloody Mary, the Sidecar, the Monkey Gland, the White Lady, the Bavardier, and an early version of the French 75. Remarkably, as of this video, Harry's New York bar remains open and is still being run by Harry's descendants. Harry Macalone would pass away in 1958 at the age of 68. Alrighty, so now that you guys know a little bit about Harry Macalone, I'm gonna go ahead and make one of his signature cocktails. The first one we are making is called Sir Walter. The Sir Walter first appears in Harry Macalone's 1927 Barflies and Cocktails. All right, let us look at what is in the sauce for our Sir Walter. The first thing you're gonna want is one ounce of cognac. Um, I'm sure if all you've got is brandy, that'll work just as fine. I'm gonna be using Pierre Patou. The next thing you're gonna need is one ounce of aged rum. I'm gonna be using Plantation Five Year. All right. Then you're gonna need a quarter ounce of a grenadine. All right, so a quarter ounce of grenadine. That'll give you some nice red color, some, add some nice dark berry notes. And then we're gonna need a quarter ounce of lemon juice. All right, I've got my, my uh, super juice here, so we're gonna do a quarter ounce of lemon juice. All right. And then we're gonna do a quarter ounce of orange curacao. I'm gonna be using Pierre Ferrand. There you go. Now we're just gonna add ice to our shaker. All right. And then you're gonna to wanna to shake that up for about 10 to 15 seconds. All right, folks, looks like we shook that bad boy up enough. I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side. I'm gonna be serving that in a coupe, which I've had here chilling like a villain. And then you're just gonna to wanna to go ahead and double strain that into your glass. All right, folks, looks like we got all we can get out of the uh, shaker here. All right, we'll put this to the side. And then you're gonna wanna just go ahead and garnish that with a little lemon peel, which I have right over here, speared to look all sexy-like. And there you have it, folks, our Sir Walter cocktail. All right, folks, so before we get into our second cocktail, let's go ahead and give this bad boy a sippy sip. Cheers. I like that. It's, it has, it's very reminiscent of a sidecar. I mean, it has a lot of the elements of a sidecar. It does taste like a vintage cocktail, which I like. You know, I always like the way that kind of tastes. It does, ha it does kind of take you back to an old style of, of cocktail making. You know, actually it's pretty, pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, nice. If you like sidecars, I think you're gonna like this cocktail. And if you don't, we're gonna get on to our next one, which is the Monkey Gland. The Monkey Gland was invented in the 1920s at Harry's New York Bar. All right, so let's look at what is in the sauce for our Monkey Gland cocktail. Now, I'm gonna be very honest with you guys. When I saw the recipe for this thing, I was not exactly enthusiastic about it. But in researching cocktails for Harry Macalone, you know, this is one of the cocktails that came up often. Apparently, it's had a bit of a renaissance. So I said, you know what, let me go ahead and try it out. I'm just not a big fan of orange juice in cocktails. 
let's see if I'm proven wrong, right? So the first thing we're gonna need is one and a half ounces of gin. All right, beautiful. So I'm gonna be using Warwick gin, which is a gin made here locally in New York, right? Then we're gonna use an ounce and a half of orange juice, all right, folks? So once again, not a huge fan of orange juice in my cocktails. An ounce and a half is a hell of a lot of orange juice in a cocktail for me, all right? But it is what it is, all right? Now we're gonna need one a bar spoon of absinthe. Now again, here we go again for another ingredient that I don't love. So, you know, I'm not sure what, what, how this is gonna work out for me, but I'm gonna go ahead, you put about, it's about a bar spoon of absinthe, all right? And then we're gonna do about a bar spoon of grenadine, okay, folks? So, you know, look, not the most sophisticated cocktail recipe I've ever seen in my life, but you know, hey, people say it's pretty good, so let's go ahead and find out. You know, maybe it's a joke cocktail, I don't know, we'll see. All right, so then we're gonna go ahead and add some ice to our shaker. And then we're gonna shake that for about 10 to 15 seconds. All right, folks, I think we shook this bad boy up enough. I'm gonna put that to the side, put that to the side, put this right over here, and then I'm gonna get my glass out. I'm gonna be serving this in a Nick and Nora, which I've had chilling like a villain, and we're gonna go ahead and just double strain it into the glass. All right, folks, it looks like we got everything we can get out of this shaker here. All right, I'm just gonna put this bad boy to the side. And then we're just gonna go ahead and garnish that with an orange peel. I'm gonna express the oil using the glass first, rub this side for good luck, because I'm gonna need good luck drinking this thing. <laughs> and then we're just gonna dump it in. And there we have it, folks, our monkey gland cocktail. All right, so let's go ahead and give Harry's uh, Monkey Gland Cocktail a sippy sip. Cheers. Uh, look, it's not the worst thing in the world, but the thing about orange juice is that it, it just really dulls a cocktail down, and that's what's happening here. You know, it really, it really brings down almost all the flavor components, all the flavor notes, and that's what you're getting here. And this is fresh squeezed orange juice. This is not out of a bottle, you know? And so, and that, that uh, gin, you know, it's got some really great botanicals and really good citrus. Um, and I just really, I'm, I'm, I'm really not picking much of that up. Give me a second, let me, let me get a second sip here. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, look, is, is it a horrible cocktail? No, it's not a horrible cocktail, but it's a, it's boring. It's a boring cocktail. It tastes like something that was probably made to mask some really bad gin <laughs> back in the Prohibition or something, I don't know. Anyway, look, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this series. I'm gonna put a link down in the description to the uh, playlist for this series. I'll put something up here too, if I remember, <laughs> when I edit. And uh, again, if you like this video, please press like, please subscribe, and please share with your family and friends. Remember. Sharing is caring, and when life gives you lemons, make yourself a cocktail. Cheers.